a UFO's interplanetary weapon. What they found were millions of trees ripped from the ground. I get the feeling you're gonna shoot me with it. I don't have to do it, please. Welcome to Mystery Files, where we take a deep dive into cases that span from the creepy to the truly bizarre and everything in between. I'm Shane, and today I'll be forcing my colleague Ryan to hear all about the unbelievable Tunguska event. In the end, you'll have to decide if the mystery is solved or if it's simply a mystery. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> hell Absolutely. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Back in the basement. I hope the story's super scary. You heard of this? You seen this? <laughs> what? Tunguska event. No, but I like the sound of it. Ah, Tunguska. Very, very good. Tunguska. Say it It really tongue. comes off the tongue. Tunguska. 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 I can't think of a better way to start an episode than that. I mean. <laughs> Asteroids, very scary. Now, if Armageddon has taught us anything, we can probably hire the Geek Squad from Best Buy uh, to blast that shit out of the sky. But did you know that even if an asteroid didn't actually hit the Earth, the impact from the resulting airborne explosion would still be completely devastating and possibly fatal for many? Well, we know this because of a mysterious Siberian incident called the Tunguska event. On June 30th, 1908, at about 7.15 a.m., an asteroid hurtled toward the Earth at a rate of around 33,500 miles per hour. That's fast. That's very fast. Very fucking fast. How fast? Well, imagine a jar of peanut butter. Now imagine it flying at 33,500 miles per hour. That's how fast. Wait. What? Now this thing is thought to have been as big as a 25 story building, over 125 feet across and weighing 220 million pounds. What scientists refer to as one big bitch. That's very heavy. How heavy? Well, imagine a jar of peanut butter. You remember that jar of peanut butter I from do before? Remember it, yeah. Now that jar weighs about one pound. Okay, now picture about 220 million of those jars. That's how heavy. I don't think this is working out the way you think. Now as the rock hit Earth's atmosphere, pressure would cause it to heat up to an estimated 44,500 degrees Fahrenheit, turning it into a fireball bound for self-detonation. Now that's very hot. How hot? Well, imagine a jar of peanut butter that's 44,500 degrees to the touch. Yikes! That's how hot. Sounds tasty, I guess. Now it finally exploded about three to six miles above what is present day Krasnoyarsky Krai, Russia, in central Siberia. It's a, uh, you know, some around I there. I see it, I got, I, there's a map. Now it's a blast that would have been seen and heard from at least 500 miles away, mostly by, one assumes, Russians, and probably some uh, squirrels and shit. Now upon detonation, it's believed to have released a blast wave of energy equivalent to about 185 atomic bombs. Yikes! That's all? What do you mean that's all? Look at this. I'm just giving you shit. That's a pretty big blast, dude. Uh, oh, to demonstrate that, uh, this is a blast wave generator. I get the feeling you're gonna shoot me with that. Check this out. I don't want to check. Don't you do it. Don't no, you do I'm it. Not... No, I'll, 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 uh. You're gonna do it. I know. I don't, don't, don't do it, please. Why? You don't have to do this. You don't <laughs> have to do this. It's wind. First. No, let me do it to you and then I'll, then no, you can do it to me. Just, just. No, what are you, what are you Why are you so worried about this? Because it looks scary. You have a slide up there that said that's, the equivalent of four gajillion fucking bombs. And I now you're giving this. This is uh, these are connected. Not that's what I'm saying. Co- yes, but I'm saying this is not even close to that. Be then what's the you. point? I just want you to feel a fragment of what these people felt I when have they an were imagination. I could imagine it would be very hot. Hey! Oh, <laughs> not bad, right? <laughs> you missed. You missed. No, no, no you hit me. You hit me. Yo! <laughs> Stop! 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 All right! All right! This is, this is how we have fun. You son of a bitch. You're a little high, a little high. That's better. Oh, you really. Oh, 
Now, other estimates say the explosive force could have been as much as 15 megatons of TNT, roughly a thousand times more powerful than the bombs at Hiroshima. Now, the resulting shockwave caused windows to be broken and people to be knocked over hundreds of miles away. That's it? But think about this, hundreds of miles away. Yeah, but still, if it's You're like still a, going, whoa! If it's still a gajillion bombs, I thought it would like Did rattle I, their no, skeleton hey, until hey, it shut exploded. Up. Did I say something. a gajillion? I just wrote. What'd you write? Did you write down a number? Did you write down a number? I wrote big ass asteroid. And then uh, I spelled it wrong and then I crossed it out. <laughs> now the uh, seismic shock wave that followed was caught by barometers as far away as England. Due to vaporized gases released into the atmosphere, dense clouds formed at high altitudes, causing abnormally bright nighttime skies across Europe. Wouldn't it be uh, radioactive or some shit like that? No. Are you paying attention? What are you? Are well, you I thought like, like the wind could blow it or something like that. Or it's an asteroid. Yeah, but if the light like it's not a, okay. It's not an atomic bomb. Yeah, but doesn't stuff from like an asteroid from space still have things like radioactive it on it? It may have like space radioactive nature to it, but it's not anything like an atomic bomb. Oh, okay, well that's cool. As far as I know, fact check me on that. I'm not Snopes.com. An estimated 80 million trees across 500,000 acres were flattened in the area and near the epicenter, nearly 25,000 acres of trees were charred. Jesus Christ. But there's very little evidence of an asteroid itself. Rather, scientists believe the majority was consumed in the explosion and the rest was likely lost to the bogs, making the only likely remains we've got to be small fragments, each less than a millimeter across. So if there was this asteroid, it impacted the atmosphere, but not the actual Earth itself. Yeah. Wouldn't there be like a, like a big ass hole in the ground? Is that what you're talking? Is it, was there a hole in the ground or was it just trees flattened? Trees flattened. But no hole in the ground. Yeah, wouldn't you say that's a little mysterious? It is mysterious. That's why there's no hole. No, no hole at all. No hole. There's no hole. No hole. Now, because the area was so rural, scientists believe there were only 30 people within range of the tree fall area at the time of impact. However, for those unlucky people, many lost consciousness and at least three died. Why do you say at least three? It's they don't know. It's 1908. I'm sure it's like they're, they don't have like a great census taker. It's Russia. They, they barely know who's there right now. That's true, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's just weird to feel like 30 people were like, impacted. Hey, I think three of them died. I'm not maybe sure. Maybe three did. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, Ryan, this is the real scary part. Well, now we're talking. Yes. Now, NASA's scientists estimate that, on average, a Tunguska-sized asteroid will enter Earth's atmosphere at least once every 300 years. Oh, so we're good. We're in the clear. Our odds are good right That's now. That's pretty good. Let's say it's going to happen within the next 20. And I'm not predicting anything here. You did predict the pandemic. But be careful. We're well, then don't predict that. Predict it won't happen. You never know. Now, the first scientific expedition to the site wasn't launched until 1921, and nearly two decades later, very little had grown out of the scorched earth. So nothing grew in the radius. Yes, but let's linger on the, the first scientific expedition wasn't launched until 19 years later. So they were a little tardy. Okay, they had, you know, World War I was going on. Sure, so they had That's other things something. to figure out. I mean, I guess but, Russia's also very big. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe they were like, yeah, it's, it's over there. We'll handle the ghost asteroid later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, because the Siberian outback conditions were so harsh, they couldn't even get to the blast area successfully until 1927. Wait. <laughs> They, yeah, I don't know. It took, <laughs> yeah, it took them 19 years to get there, and then once they got there, <laughs> they it got, took them six years to wade through yeah, that? Yeah, look, you know. This is the site, right? These fucking trees? That looks real treacherous. Maybe it wasn't, like, top priority, okay? <laughs> Clearly. That looks like the densest brush I've ever seen, those skinny toothpicks. Well, trees. you know. At least one year per tree, by my estimation. Harsh. Six years is I uh, thought not, Russians were not, supposed to be tough. Well, they didn't have smartphones. It's embarrassing or MapQuest. Now these expeditions were led by Soviet scientist Leonid Alexeyevich Kulik, the chief curator of the meteorite collection of the St. Petersburg Museum. Now Kulik's elite team of fact fetishists, including two geochemists, a chemist, a geologist, a mineralogist, and an astronomer, as well as a physicist, had hundreds of square miles of remote forest to study. Mm. Hey. You know, they were like, hell yeah. 
Let me get in there. And then they were like, hey, cool it. Oh, cool it, yeah. <laughs> let's cool it for six years. Hey, let's stretch it out. You know, let's go camping. Yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe it was a government-funded project, and they were like, let's take it easy. This is a nice little area. Let's say you and I are out in a ghost hunt. We're getting paid. We're on the clock, right? We're getting paid hourly? Yeah, hourly. Ooh. How long are we taking on that ghost I hunt? I mean, it's a pretty haunted site. Yeah. Pretty haunted. We're going to need at least three weeks here. Yeah, there's nothing to see. We're not going to stay at a place that long. But if we were getting paid, I'd be like, we better stick around a little longer. No, we're going to need at least a year. Yeah. <laughs> what they found were millions of trees. What? Ripped from the ground. Oh, you cheeky little bugger. Gotcha. Look at that. Ripped? Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. I got lost in the sauce yeah, of your little... Trees. Ripped from the ground. 10 to 20 miles from the epicenter, they were astonished by splintered trees lying on their side in a strange radial pattern that led them like a map to the center. Damn. Obviously, the trees fell pointing away from the site of impact. But, Ryan, don't touch that. <laughs> Give that back to me, actually. Wait, 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 wait. I was just looking at it. I'm just going to keep this over here. That would have been so good if I could have just surprised you in the middle. <laughs> well, you can't surprise me. <laughs> no! <laughs> Once they got to ground zero, their eyes beheld a surprising scene. The trees were standing upright, limbs and bark completely stripped away, but there was no evidence of a crater, just a bog and this forest of telephone poles. Okay, well, you, you had a lot of tree talk there. I know. So, some so are, let's break it down. Right? Some were out of the ground, their roots just pulled out. All around it, the, yeah. for the 10 to 20 miles around it, the trees were bent over. Yeah. Right? Away from... The epicenter. So it's very easy to find ground zero because they were all essentially pointing toward this is the spot where it hit. Where but we... then when they got to the epicenter, the trees were standing straight up. What do you think of that? I don't know what to think of that. That's fucking weird. Freaky. Huh? How does that even make sense? It's freaky. It's a bit mysterious. Oh, you're, you're just writing down trees? Trees flat. Okay. Well, that's something. Center up. Center up. You got it. Now, scientists say that this debranching is caused by, quote, fast-moving shockwaves that break off a tree's branches before the branches can transfer the impact momentum to the tree's stem. So that's why the middle ones are up? That's what scientists said. And what the fuck do they know? It took them six years to get there. I don't know. I mean, they probably know about blast physics, you know? <laughs> you think the scientists know about science? <laughs> yeah, I generally trust them on these things. Well, that doesn't sound right to me. It's like a tree... Right? Yeah. But no branches. So, no, I, yeah, knocked all the branches it's like off. A, it's just the fucking trunk. But maybe because the force was coming directly from overhead, you know, the branches... Yeah, like a, like a ladder tree. Almost. Meanwhile, pushes out, which yeah. would explain the other ones getting knocked over. Yeah, because if the away. force is coming down... It's coming straight down. And then down. it hits the ground, then the wave just gets sent out from the impact. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, I could see that. This is still like this. How, how much cleaner is it, though? Can you show me how the branches come off a little bit more? Like... <laughs> Maybe, maybe one more time? No. <laughs> <laughs> These branchless trees were also found at the site of the atomic explosion in Hiroshima, Japan. Now, witnesses from almost a thousand miles away saw the fireball in the sky, but those closest to the impact, the locals of the Podkemenaya Tunguska River region, were hesitant to speak with Kulik's team. They believed the blast was caused by a visit from the god Ogdi, who cursed the area, smashing trees and killing forest animals, including a thousand reindeer, the economic temple for many in the area. He looks real vengeful. Yeah, he looks pissed. Yeah, that's a pissed off tree. That's a pissed dude. Is he a, he's a tree god? I mean, clearly. I mean, I don't know about this guy. Is this just a rendering of him being paid homage to via a tree, or is... No, that's him. That's, that's a photograph that's, of him. That's him. Okay. Yeah. Can you do his, the sad face that he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> now, those willing to speak with the scientists described a fireball moving through the sky, bluish in hue and light nearly as bright as the sun lighting the horizon in the distance. The way the ground trembled and shook buildings like an earthquake, knocking things off walls and tables, and the hot winds strong enough to knock people down. Ah. This was followed by a flash and a sound similar to artillery fire. Gah, 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 gah. One of the witnesses who was based... You know we oh, can do okay. sound effects in post. Oh, okay. That's the best machine gun you got? Yeah. Oh, cool. So do a do a like a do that, but then take a break, and then like do a. <laughs> okay. 
One of the witnesses who was based at the Venera trading post at the time of the impact said that the heat blast caused him to be launched from his chair, describing, quote, Suddenly, in the north, the sky was split in two, and high above the forest, the whole northern part of the sky appeared covered with fire. At that moment, there was a bang in the sky and a mighty crash. The crash was followed by a noise like stones falling from the sky or of guns firing. The earth trembled. Well, now you know quite a bit about the Tunguska event. I do indeed. And with that, it's corkboard time. Let's get into the theories. So, following Kulik's investigations, wild theories began to spread in an effort to try to explain the Tunguska event. NASA once called it, quote, an astronomical cold case. In fact, Don Yeomans, manager of the Near Earth Object Office at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, says of the event, quote, a century later, some still debate the cause and come up with different scenarios that could have caused the explosion. While there are estimates and hypotheses to guide us, since there is very little physical evidence of the asteroid, some important questions still remain. We don't definitively know what exactly it was made of or what caused it to explode. So. What happened to that flattened Siberian forest? Ryan, what do you think happened? The tree god is pretty funny. Ogdi. I'd love for Ogdi to be the, the root cause. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Oh, it looks like there's a lot of- a second. You got a little pun trophy. Oh, thank that. you, dude. We got some of those lying around. Hey, dude, I've around. never held one of these, ex no, I guess except not. that one time. So you're gonna go with, uh, you go with Ogdi. No, oh, shit. Uh, based on what we've said. Aliens. That's what I like to hear from you. Aliens, baby. Yeah, that feels right coming Aliens. from Aliens. All right, well, let's get into the theories. Theory one. Uh, so a team of Italian scientists proposed that Lake Chaco is actually a crater, as there is no record of it before 1908. However, the surrounding region is characterized by similar shallow ponds and was never explored or mapped well. So many scientists are skeptical. Even without a definite site of impact to prove the asteroid theory definitively, most scientists still categorize it as, quote, an impact event. And specifically in this case, what is now known as an airburst. Essentially, the radiant energy from the explosion was powerful enough to ignite the forest, but the fire was put out as the blast wave following extinguished it, leaving behind the forest that was charred rather than burned. Impact event. So now, even though, Ryan, I'm not going to actually throw anything at you, you can see that, ah! you know, you feel that, right? But I feel that. I'm well don't, don't aware. Don't cover your face. I'm well aware of what an airburst is. I travel with you all the time. And I've seen the charred remains you've left behind. That's how that works. Like that time you shit your pants in New Orleans. You can't just say stuff. I mean, you... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't. Now, theory two. Some scientists posit that rather than an asteroid, an icy comet caused the explosion, noting the presence of glowing blue-white noctilucent clouds recorded high in the skies over Europe following the event. Now these clouds form due to a rapid influx of ice crystals and dust from meteoroid smoke, making them a rare phenomenon that could be triggered by the sudden vaporization of a comet. I know that's a, I just threw a lot at you and, and sometimes receiving that much information- I swear to God, can feel like Jesus Christ, all right? God damn it. I know it can be uh, uh, overwhelming, but- Certainly that helps with the overwhelming. You ever been to Europe? Yeah. Sometimes the sky's blue, I think, right? Just like it is here. <laughs> so you mean to tell me that the entire Tunguska event happened because of ice? Blue balls? Now you're talking my language. Then there are the more outlandish theories, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Great. Like that the incident could have been a failed attempt by a Russian scientist to manufacture an early atomic bomb. When did the nuclear arms race start? It was like way past World War I. Like, yeah, it was after World War II, the Cold War. So yeah, then that one doesn't really make that much sense timeline-wise. They wouldn't even know, have known of a, such an object. 
Well, they, I mean, I'm sure they were working on it for a while because they used it in World War II. 1906? And was, well, no, there wasn't no atomic bomb in 1906. Yeah, yeah. 1908, I, I think. It was. I didn't write that down. Okay. Or perhaps you will feel more familiar with these. Bergara, it was caused by an alien spacecraft. Yes, some people believe it was an alien spacecraft that may have crashed into Earth, or possibly a UFO's interplanetary weapon that detonated there for unknown reasons. It's too much quotes. Sorry, it's a nonsense hooey. Yeah. You know, well, I do believe in aliens, that's true. But I, me personally, I think it's a little far-fetched. I, I just, if it was a... A, a spacecraft crashing into the ground, there would be still be some sort of crater. You'd yeah, you'd think. be like, I found some gears here and some, yeah. uh, you know, a stick shifter or, or something. Or you'd find a fucking, you know, a gray sitting there with yeah, a very like, confused <laughs> look on its face, like, oh, fuck! <laughs> you'd be like, call oh, AAA. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I put down the landing gear. <laughs> I'm about to have a stroke of genius right now, so All right. put your receptive cap on. Okay. Blast me with it, dude. Oh, dude, here we go. Blast me with it. Blast me with your genius. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oof, that actually did. Yeah, that was a good one. What if it wasn't a crash, it wasn't a weapon, but what if an alien spacecraft just landed and the, the propulsion system of it, it was enough to melt the trees but not really cause a crater because it's landing? Okay, so they, it, they lands. Yeah. They get out and they're like, tight, tight, tight. All right. Get back in. Yeah, they land. They're like, oh, fuck, we're in Russia. Oh, Russia? I thought we were going to Disneyland. What yeah. the fuck is this? Even though that predates Disneyland by about 50 years. They could probably see into the future. Maybe they were the ones that told Walt about it. Is that theory four? Draw a mouse. Now, in the 1960s, some tried to explain the Tunguska event by bringing it back down to Earth with a phenomena called Vern shots, named after sci-fi author... Uh, Mr. Jules Verne, a Verne shot is a possible reaction of magma from the Earth's core mixed with a trapped bubble of volcanic gas beneath the basalt of the once highly seismic Siberian traps. Geology, what baby. What the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> You're looking at a map and the word magma. It and just looks a like a map with a human heart on it. Volcanic gas. Uh, you know, when stuff mixes, sometimes stuff happens. Goes you know? boom. S stuff go boom. So Think it went that. boom from down below? Went boom, boom from down below. But didn't leave any sort of, sort of evidence that that would have happened? You would think they'd be able to see that in the soil or the I'm terrain? Not, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a geologist over here. Yeah. I took one geology class in college uh, for fun. It's like an uh, underground. I got like a C plus. Now this theory was speculative at best as there was no evidence of shattered rock or gas vents. And while gas bubbles are seen in Siberian lakes, the origin of the methane is not from deep underground. It's from Shane. No. <laughs> theory five. By the 70s, a group of American physicists brought it back to the skies. Uh, with a theory that a small black hole, oh, what do you think about that, collided with our planet, essentially causing a matter-antimatter explosion in the atmosphere. But that wouldn't explain the impact-related minerals, like nanodiamonds. Oh, damn. Which are associated with meteoroids, and they were found, albeit in very small quantities, ah. at the site, or the way the trees had fallen in sequence away from the epicenter, bringing us back to the more generally accepted asteroid theory. Now, Ryan, after all we've discussed, do you think this mystery is solved, or is it simply a mystery? I don't think there's enough to say it's an asteroid because there's no crater. Mm. And I think if it was aliens, it would never be accepted that it was aliens, so. They'd hide it. They would hide it. I'm gonna guess it's a mystery, but I will say that if I had to pick one, in my heart of hearts, theory two is kind of fun because it's an, like an ice ball and then it just evaporates and then maybe that's why there's no crater. But uh, I wish I could pick number three aliens. So you're gonna say mystery, mystery. but balls as a backup. I'm gonna say mystery, but blue ball as a backup. <laughs> you are correct. Oh, there you go. It's a mystery. Yes, Mother Nature is an enduring mystery that we humans will forever be beguiled by as we try to understand her and know her. But in this case, we know that the human race got lucky on that day in 1908 by missing the full impact of an asteroid, though we may never fully understand why. We'll let this one be 
a mystery. You think it was an asteroid? Yeah, I think it was just an asteroid. You think it was an yeah, asteroid? I think so, yeah. I, I mean, think that's just a crater that's an asteroid. But isn't that, is that lake even near the epicenter of all the folded sure, trees? yeah, yeah. You're just saying sure, you don't even yeah, know if that's I, I, true. Hey, I'll take it, yeah, works for me. There's, <laughs> you don't even know if that's yeah, true. It's asteroid, probably an asteroid, you know. Fuck it, it was aliens, dude. You I mean, can't just say that. You can't just say that the, that's a crater from the asteroid. I think it's, it's just a thing. crater from the asteroid. You can't just say aliens either. I though. think a ship landed, you know, was think. like, fuck this place. Though if it was let's like the end of X-Files, we should go to McDonald's. I'm actually very hungry. Me too. Okay, let's do it. You ever seen a dog without a tail? It cannot stand on four legs. That's not true. Didn't think so.